All right, so today I want to talk about force feeding ball pythons, which seems to be, I keep getting a lot of questions in the comments under my videos, a lot of people talking about force feeding their ball pythons. And let me tell you, there are some videos out there of people force feeding, or I would consider it kind of assist feeding ball pythons. But a lot of people, they, they kind of misunderstand when you're, you're supposed to force feed a ball python. <laughs> Most people call it assist feed. You know, force feeding is kind of taboo in the reptile industry. When you assist feed your ball python, usually it's from the very first meal before they've actually had the very first meal. As a matter of fact, a lot of people have written down in the comment section, they're like, hey, I just got this ball python. It hasn't eaten in a month, and I brought it to the vet, and we actually assist fed that ball python. And let me tell you, even if it doesn't eat for a month, you do not want to assist feed your ball python, even if it goes on a fast for months and months at a time. Usually what will actually happen is a lot of times if you try to assist feed a ball python that's already mature, a lot of times you'll kind of put them off of food. You'll kind of have the opposite effect of actually what you're intending. And there's a couple things you have to keep in mind. You know, ball pythons, when they're brand new, hatched out of the egg, they really can't figure out how to eat. Sometimes it's really tricky. And usually the very first meals for a ball python, I pretty much found, it has to be a live mouse hopper, a really small live mouse. I'd say pretty much between, you know, just, you know, pretty, you can't really feed them a pinky that is like a hairless pinky because that's too small, but you don't want to feed them a hopper that's too big. As a matter of fact, I actually have a snake right here. Take a look at this one. So this is Bobby around my neck. This is Bobby, my bamboo ball python, seven years old, and he actually had some, some children, <laughs> actually had some offspring, and then I bred those offspring. So take a look at this. This is Bobby's grandchild. Take a look at this. This is Bobby's little baby. <laughs> his, this is actually his very first grandchild. Look at the difference between these two guys. So cute. It's funny, Bobby actually developed these spots right on his head and you really don't see them on a little tiny bamboo. Look at that beautiful head on this one. This is actually, this is actually a bamboo calico possible pastel that hopefully if there's actually pastel in there, I might actually hold this one back. But this is the one that, as a matter of fact, this one hatched out just recently and hasn't had a single meal at all. So this one, essentially what I do is I go through the rack and I feed these, the live mice, and kind of go through the whole rack. And after about five or six meals, if some of these have not eaten after about six, maybe seven or eight meals, I'll actually consider assist feeding. But I'd say, usually, as a matter of fact, last year I had about 100 hatchlings and none of them had to be assist fed. Some of them were like a few weeks behind and they finally, finally ate some. As a matter of fact, the people are asking me, hey, can you make an assist feeding video? And sometimes I really don't like to do it. As a matter of fact, I did an assist feeding video once and a lot of people were kind of disturbed over it. Essentially what you do is you kind of have to kind of slightly open the mouth of the ball python. You have to put like the nose of the rodent right in the mouth and kind of hold their mouth and kind of clamp it down right on the rodent. You have to be really super careful and then I'd say probably four out of five times a lot of times they won't actually take it the first time so you have to go back and try it again and again and let me tell you once a ball python eats the first meal you should never ever assist feed that ball python again I don't know what this guy's doing. <laughs> kind of looking up straight at the sky <laughs> look at that that is kind of crazy I've never seen a snake do that I don't know what he's doing he hasn't had a single meal yet and he just came out of the as a matter of fact, he's got a pretty good body condition for never eating a single meal. And kind of the, the, the thing that kind of troubled me is there's a lot of people, you know, in the comments section talking about, hey, my ball python hasn't eaten for a long time. Should I assist feed? And I would say definitely not. Unless you have a ball python that is a hatchling that has never eaten a single meal in its entire life, I would say, you know, pretty much 100% that you should never force feed or assist feed that ball python. It doesn't matter how long that ball python hasn't eaten. They will eventually eat, let me tell you. And pretty much the best thing you can do is just keep offering food week after week. And if you had that, if it's, as a matter of fact, if it's a brand new ball python in a new enclosure and it hasn't eaten for months, then you might have a problem with your setup. You, you might not have the right hiding spot. You might not have the right temperature or humidity or something may be wrong with your setup as far as that ball python not eating. And sometimes, you know, I've actually sold some snakes here in my class collection that were full grown adults, like maybe 2000 grams and they've been fasting for a really long time and people will buy
I am, and I'll say, hey, that snake's been fasting, and then you kind of go into it knowing, all right, this snake might not eat for a while, but just keep in mind that eventually, if you keep offering, you know, every single week, that that snake will eventually eat, and you never should uh, assist feed a snake like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave you with some more drone footage at the end of this. As a matter of fact, I've been going through some of my archives, kind of pulling out some of my old drone footage. As a matter of fact, I had some drone uh, where I actually kind of flew it above and I was kind of feeding my dogs and stuff like that. Maybe I'll pull that one out. I know the last one I showed, I kind of pulled out an old archive of some drone footage and it was in the middle of the winter and people were like, hey, what's the deal with the snow in the middle of the summer? I thought that was pretty funny. I'm just kind of pulling out some old drone footage that I had some, on some of my previous videos and it's kind of interesting because I'll have you know I'll put some of that really awesome drone footage on the end of a video and if you know if it's not really that popular of a video a lot of people don't actually see that drone footage so I thought I'd pull it out and kind of show it in another video which is pretty awesome so that is pretty much it thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video
let's try something else. See if I can thread the needle right between those boats. No, 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 no. <laughs> About just a slightly over the water. Dude, what are you thinking? <laughs> okay, I'll make sure there's no one coming across, I guess. Let's see if I can get the camera in the focus. And the angle. <laughs> All word. right, we're recording. It's recording. All right, here we go. Oh, my God. <sighs> oh, frick. Do you need to go up any? Looks like you're going to hit that thing. Oh, 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 oh shoot. <laughs> frick. Oh, my word. <laughs> that is threading the needle.